Hey guys, Fatso Gamer here. In this video, I cover my daily process of buying games cheap. So in this video, I'm gonna go through with you my daily process of how I qualify ads on Gumtree, how I contact people, the word tracks that I use, and things that I say to get things cheaper. I'll be going through actual examples, so I'll have uh, screen recordings of me scrolling, um, I'll also have screenshots of messages, correspondence that I've had with people, and at the end of the vi video, I'll be going through with you the spreadsheet that I use to price everything up, so I'll be explaining exactly how to use it, um, certain things that I change around, and also be providing a link for that uh, spreadsheet in the comments below as well. Okay, so in a second, I'm going to bring up the Gumtree screen, screen recording that I did the other day, which will show you how I basically scan for items. So first thing I do, I go browse, electronics and computer, video games. So I just bring up all listings because basically I'll buy anything if it's at a good price. And then I just scroll through, sort of recent through. So I have a look. Obviously, your top ads are your paid ads. Sometimes you can get a really good deal and there'll be something that just came on a few minutes ago. So this one here, four gigabyte Xbox 360 with four controllers and some games. So just waiting to bring up the games there. Now this one would have been good if it had more games or if it had a hard drive in it, but I'll give that one a miss for now. This one is an older style Xbox 360. So it says with games, what games, I don't know. So this is one that I'll send a message to him just saying, which games does it come with, basically, so that, you know, I can get a bit of an insight into value in it. $50 isn't too bad, but if they're crap games, it's not worth it because I wouldn't sell the console for much. But the Wi-Fi adapter, being an older one, if it's got that, that alone will sell for $60. So with these older consoles, I always ask the question, uh, does it have the um, Wi-Fi adapter? This one here, at the moment, I'm just asking how many controllers because that will affect it as well because I didn't see any controllers in the uh, description there. Scrolling through. Now, that Wii U is not too bad, but sometimes they can take a bit longer to sell. This PlayStation 3 does look kind of good because it's got quite a few games. It's a 500 gigabyte, which sells for about $100 or 100 120 on eBay, and they sell very, very quickly. But... You can't see all the games, so it's not really clear what I'm buying. I can see one sports one in the front. If they're all sports ones, then it doesn't really make sense to buy it. Um, but I would still pay $90 for it because it's got all those controllers. And I know that I can sell the console alone for $100 to $120. This one here, PS2 games and controllers. I always love looking at PS2 games because sometimes some of these games can be worth anywhere from sort of 30 to $80 if you get really rare ones, but in that case, there wasn't any there. Scrolling through, what else can we see? Ah, oh, blue Xbox 360. Now, I've got a few of these. I actually don't sell that many. They don't seem to be collectibles. They do have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, though, which does take some time to sell, but I'll sell them for about $48. So this one, if it comes with a bunch of games, you know, potentially I could make some money off it. PS3 games for $2 each, but they're not really $2 each. Anytime I see that, when they bait you in for a cheap price and then they itemize the prices, I just close it down because they're basically just selling them individually and you'll never get a good deal. There's no point even wasting your time. Okay, what else is there? PS4 Slim 1 Terabyte. That looked all right. Uh, Xbox 360 with games. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9... 13 games, not really worth it, 200 bucks, that's way too high, not even any point saving it, doesn't have enough games. What else have we got? Xbox One controller, that's not bad for 40 bucks if I need another one. PS3, 80 gigabytes, no, I'd want a 60. That's the thing, with those old PS3s, I only get the 60 gigabytes, there's no point getting the other ones, because the 60 gigabytes, you can make a really good profit margin on them. Xbox One with FIFA 18, 180 bucks. That's a pretty good price because you could sell the Xbox One for 150. FIFA's worth like 10 bucks. Controller's worth 50, but yeah, not really sensational. Not what we're looking for. We're looking to at least double our money. Elgato Cam Camlink. Oh. Uh, what else have we got? PS4 Pro. No, too expensive. Assorted video games. 
This one's not bad, but it's a good price for what it is. But these games are really slow sellers, except for Grand Theft Auto Five. So twenty bucks for for what seven games this is my usual sort of price. However, they're just not great games, and to drive well, this one's actually quite near my house, but. To drive to someone's house to pick up some games to maybe make, you know, let's say I make 20 bucks and it, and it takes a long time. It's not really worth it. I usually, whenever I pick something up, I like to make at least $50. Um, that way it's worth my time. And, and if I am only making $50, it's because I'm picking something up that I really want, like a game I don't have or an accessory or something. So Xbox 360, two with a TV, too expensive. And I don't want another TV anyway. I've got enough. What else? White PS4, 500 gigabyte. That's a good one, actually. Don't know why I didn't open that one up. Because they usually sell for, like, 250 on eBay um, with a controller, though. But it's only got one game, so that's probably why I didn't open that one up. Xbox One X. Jeez, they're holding their value way too well. I'd love to get one of those, but not until they're, like, you know, sort of 300 to $400. So the other thing that I'll do sometimes as well... So I've had a look at recent ones. I'll then put in a specific search. So I'll put in either Xbox 360 or PS3 just to see if there was something I missed in previous days or if someone's reduced the price of something and now it's more interesting to me. So having a look through, Xbox 360 with controller, headset and games. What games? Oh, they don't have cases. What are you doing, people? Keep your cases. This is just rubbish to me. Like, I really dislike it when people don't have the cases because it just devalues it straight away and it makes it harder to sell. I do sell some of my games disc only, especially um, if they're, like, sports games because it saves me a dollar on the postage, but I just don't like doing it. So this one's got an okay selection of games. Most of those games sell for 7 to 10. It's got the Wi-Fi adapter. That's really good. Two controllers... So that's not too bad. What I didn't see how much they wanted for it though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, well, about 15 games ish. Two controllers per pick. 80 bucks. That's actually not too bad. And where are they? Bull Creek. I saved that one. Okay, I might have a look at that one when I finish this video because that's actually not a bad buy because that Wi Fi would sell for $60. You'd sell the games for something and the controllers for something. And I'd probably just ditch the console, to be honest. I have been selling them on eBay, but I only make like $15 profit off the console. So for the puss and pain of doing it, this one, $100, few games, connect. Not really worth it. What else have we got? Xbox 360 controller, 25 bucks. Yeah. Controller and wireless controller, no. That sounds crap. Xbox 360 with 26 games. Why didn't I go into that one? Um, yeah, I think that's coming near the end. Any excellent condition, pre-owned gains, $1. Uh, see, this is another one where they put individual prices. These really annoy me. I don't even bother entertaining it. It's just people just being silly. And basically, they'll want eBay prices, but they're not paying postage. So, you know, good on them. But I, I wouldn't wait around for, like, half an hour for someone to arrive at my house to make, like, you know, even 10 bucks. Like, I'd rather have my privacy, to be honest. Xbox 360 games negotiable. One, two, oh, I actually want this one because my Left 4 Dead um, copy that I've got is just a classic version, so I actually need the original one. And what do I message him? Hey there. I would like to offer... What would I like to offer? What do I say? 60. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I went a bit conservative on that one but um i don't think i ended up getting that one actually i think someone picked that up before me even if it's at a good price i always put an offer in the example that we'll have later on for the spreadsheet it was an exceptional deal how it was i still tried to get it a little bit cheaper anyway so i th i think it helps to you know so even from their point of view even if you do settle for what they're advertising it for even just to have to try and get it a little bit cheaper sort of shows that, you know, once you do come up, then it's sort of more settled. I'll actually bring up that correspondence now, just so the spreadsheet makes a bit more sense, so you know what I'm referring to. So this uh, is how it goes. So I'll read it out to you. So it's also on screen if you want to read along. So would you do 80 and I'll pick up tonight? So reason why, look, 
is advertised for 100 I'm offering 80 It's already a good deal. Sometimes if you say, I'll pick up tonight, they're more likely to say yes. So that's why I said that. He replies, sorry, fairly firm on price, mate. Fair enough, it's a good price, you know. I would be too. The fact that he said sorry and he said fairly firm and he's also called me mate sort of makes me think, well, he's pretty reasonable. He's not being a jerk. So I can probably get a little bit of a discount. So I've said to him, would you meet in the middle? $90. He's probably thinking, oh, I, I don't really want to sell it for that, but that seems reasonable. Really good tactic to use. And so I've saved 10 bucks. That's $10 in my pocket. I said, sweet, thanks. I can pick up tomorrow night. Uh, can I pick up tomorrow night? Because rather than me, you know, I was already on my way home. I didn't really want to drive all the way up there. It'd be better for me tomorrow night. So I've also not only got a discount, I've also negotiated my time a bit better. And then I continue on. So basically, I didn't get a response from him. So then I always send things just to sort of guilt them a little bit so that they don't sell it to someone else. So I said, uh, cool beans, I'll get the cash out first thing in the morning so I can come straight from work. And I've said, thanks again. Then I've let him know, hey, I've got the cash out. Are we still good for 6.30? Still no message. Then later in the day, as it's getting closer, so 4 p.m. now, I've said, still good for 6.30. And then at 5.30, I've sent the message saying, hey, I'm leaving work, so I need to know if I'm heading up your way or not. He said, yeah, sorry, mate, pick up his Wanneroo. Okay, so, and then I ended up picking it up, and as you know, and we'll start going through the good stuff, which is the spreadsheet. So first things first, we've got to enter the data. So what I did for this one, because they're all PS3, basically I just uh, copied PS3. So I can basically write the title and then just paste it straight in at the end. So something little, but when you, especially if you're valuing like 100 games, saves you a lot of time. And it is important that you put which console on because that will actually help you when it does create the link to eBay so that you are getting the right console. Because if you just put in Assassin's Creed, it bring up Wii games, Xbox 360, Xbox One, everything, and it just is too much information. You want it pretty specific. So just make sure that you put the console in at the end as well. So basically, once we've got all the data in there, then we'll start clicking on the... So the white bits where we put in the data, then you see the green bits, search eBay, now that's our provided link. So that actually gives us a link to, now for this one, it's the Australian eBay, but I will do one for, for America as well. If anyone's interested, I will need someone to, if you could please just comment below, just let me know that you're willing to help out with this. Basically all I'll need is just some postage costs um, and just some information from you, just so I can create an American version of this spreadsheet as well. So if you are interested in this spreadsheet, and you are in a different country, even if you're in other countries other than America, please uh, comment below and say, hey, I can help if you can do one for Europe, UK, wherever it is, and we'll do one together, and then I'll put the links in the comments below. So I will be, I know I've got some people in America that will want this, so I'm pretty sure we'll be doing one for America. The Australian one will be in the description already, and have a look, even if uh, your country isn't, uh, like I haven't said your country, so just have a comment uh, and tell me that you're willing to help and then I'll make one up for you as well. So anyway, I'm going to skip forward on this and then we'll get into the uh, basically the clicking on the links and how I populate things. Okay, so I think we're almost done with all those. I do have one more to put in the bottom here and it will be the PlayStation 3 itself. Now for this spreadsheet, what it does for me Basically, I'll put in everything on the left. It creates a link for me and just saves me time. So rather than having to put everything in, uh, basically into eBay and then select or everything how I have it set out, it's got a preset link so that it will automatically give me games. Um, so in the video game category, buy it now has to be used. So it excludes all new ones and it automatically categorizes them low to high. So this basically means that once I've put the field in, I click the link, then it gives me the prices low to high and I know how to price them. Now, I always price mine so that they're a dollar cheaper than everyone else. The reason why I do this, obviously, I want it to be the cheapest so that I get higher turnover so I'm not holding on to gains for too long because the more cash you've got at your uh, disposal, the more you can games you can buy, the more you can replenish stock and it just helps build your collection a lot faster. 
So there are some instances where I'll do less than a dollar. And that's generally if a game sells for less than $7. So $7 is my cutoff for where I list games. If it's lower than $7, basically what I do is I put it in a 50 liter tub. I label it games under $7 and I put it in my shed and I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it later. At the moment, I think I've got about three to four 50 liter tubs worth. So I have to start figuring out what I'm going to do with them soon. But the reason why I don't list them is because you've, you've got certain costs that you're always going to incur with this. So the costs are, you've got $2 for, well, in Australia, $2 for postage, 16 cents for a envelope, 30 cents for your PayPal transaction. So that's just your flat rate, not including the percentage. So automatically you've got $2.50 that you're spending with every game that's sent out that comes off the price that you sell it for. You've also got your, well, for me, it's 9% that I pay to eBay because I get a tops, top rated seller discount, which will go through next video when we go through selling. And I've also got to pay 2.9% to PayPal for the PayPal fees. So you're talking 12% of the cost goes to them plus $2.50. So if you're selling a game for, what's my cutoff? $6.50, I think I actually make $3. So hence why I don't sell games for under $7 anymore. It's just not worth the pain of it. Because if I sell it, let's say I sell it for $5, send it off there, it will net me about $1.70 in profit. If it doesn't arrive, if there's uh, something wrong with it, I've got to refund that. So not only have I basically sent a game off for free, but then I've got to pay for everything as well. So you've just got to set a cutoff point for where what you're willing to make at your lowest end. Um, for some of you, you know, if you are trying to build up a collection, you know, you'll be happy to break even on some things just to get rid of it, just to get more money. I'm obviously at a different stage now where for my account, I'm because I don't have an eBay store, I'm just a, a consumer eBay one, I'm limited to 810 items per month. And seeing I've got so many games, I've got to sort of leverage which ones I sell and which ones I don't. So anything under seven definitely doesn't get sold. Um, and as I get more and more games, I start cutting off one. So that does reset every month. But anyway, enough about that. So once this is all populated... It will um, basically spit out all the information we need for what your overall selling price will be, um, what the total profit will be after all your costs. So this actually takes out all your costs for you. And then it will tell you, um, you once you put in your buyer price, how much you're actually going to make once it all sells. So provided that it would sell for what you're putting in. Now, I occasionally have had to discount games even lower than this but it's usually once they get to about two or three months have been on there I'll drop the price by 10% which isn't much but um, I'll go through that in next video as well on selling games so I'll show you how to bulk edit uh, listings and things as well but it's pretty easy anyway I'll skip ahead to the end and then I'll go through that information that we've been looking through uh, looking at on the side there and tell you exactly what that's saying okay so the only thing we've got to put in now is our buy price so that goes in the blue box here that's only that's actually the only square that you can populate on here other than the notes so the actual price I paid for it was $90 I have actually already sold the console with the controller for a hundred dollars on eBay. So I've just putting that in the notes there. The reason why I do notes is so that I can identify which uh, lot of games it was that I've priced up here. Cause when I do the listings, I'll actually use this as a reference. That way I don't have to double price things. So I'm basically I buy things, anything that I'll keep, I'll put into a section and I'll put it all together so that I know it's from that lot. And then I just bring up the appropriate spreadsheet for that one. And then I just put it into eBay and it makes it really, really quick and easy. So it's sort of saving you time again when you go to list them as well. So explaining through what's on the side here. So our total sales are up the top there. So that's how much we're actually physically going to sell everything for. So these games and console will sell for $302.90. Total number of games is 24. However, one slot is actually the console and the FIFA games I've taken out. 
pluses too that I couldn't read the labels of, which I've put the notes in there. So there will be a little extra profit there as well. Total profit. So this is after all the fees. So the fees are all built into the spreadsheet there. So the fees take out your, for Australia, this is actually what I incur. So $2 for postage, 16 cents for an envelope, 30 cents for your PayPal transaction. That's a base fee. Plus there's percentages that you pay on everything as well. So PayPal, you pay 2.9% on the total selling price and eBay, I pay 9% on the selling price after my top rated seller discount. I'll go through top rated seller in the next video as well, but it's pretty simple to obtain. So that's actually how much we'll make after it's all sold. So you can see there that my cost for selling everything's almost $100. So that's a third of it's gone straight away. So based on that total profit, you can see in the yellow there, I've got the recommended total buy. So these are my buy prices that I've put in. So if I don't really want it, then 67 bucks, I should buy it regardless. If I do really want it, like there's a few games in there that I like, or it's something, you know, unique that I can sort of sell on eBay or something I'll sell fast, then I can pay up to $102. So with this particular set now, why didn't I pay 100 and why didn't I pay 67? Why did I pay 90? Well, first of all, I didn't spreadsheet it out, so I just sort of guessed. But I paid 90 because I knew the console would sell for 100, so I'd make my money back straight away. But 67, I would have put an offer in at around 67 or 60-ish if it was Xbox 360. Because majority of my eBay listings now are Xbox 360 games. If I can pick up something that's PS3 or Wii, Usually I'll pay a little bit more because it's going to sell a bit quicker for me because I've sort of cornered, well, I've got a good share of the market for Xbox 360, but if I can get some PS3 buyers as well, it just means I've got more things that I can sell to more people and it, it just makes it a bit more diversified. So that's why I sort of would be probably more willing to pay more for PS3 than Xbox 360 games at the minute. Next column down there, you've got profit after buy costs. So that's based on that yellow line there. So if I bought it for $67, my profit would have been $137. If I bought it for $102, my profit would have been $102. So not hard to see where those numbers are derived from. So the first number, your $137, is paying a third. So $67 is a third of your total profit, and then $102 is half. So that's how I work it out. So usually... Well, not usually. Every time I like to at least double my money or triple it in some cases because, you know, it sort of seems like, wow, you're doubling your money on everything, but it doesn't always work out that way because sometimes things don't sell. They take three months. So you've got to hold on to the stock. So you've got to put a price on your storage costs as well because, you know, you've got to have somewhere to store it and that takes up space, which is essentially rent. So you've got to have a price for that. Additionally, if it gets to like two, three months, I'll start discounting them. So... I'll do them in bulk. So when I see, because it's three months, you get free listings on eBay. They automatically relist. If it gets to three months and they don't automatically relist, I'll reduce them by 10%. But I do it in all in bulk and it takes one second. And I'll show you that in the next video. So that's why you, you want to pay, you want to make at least two or three times your money because a lot of it will turn over quickly, but some of it will take a few months. So you want to sort of leverage your cash flow. Next one down, which we went through, is your actual buy price. So once you populate that, in the black, it tells you exactly how much profit you'll make. So off this, I'll make $115.36 profit. So I've made more than double my money after all my costs, which is great. So that explains the spreadsheet. Hopefully, it's been beneficial to you. It does have quite a lot in it it is really good for not only when you buy games for but for when you sell games i always make obviously multiple copies of this spreadsheet so i've got it for each one hopefully this has been really useful if there is anything that i didn't cover in this video please put it in the comments below and i'll make like an annexure or another video on it or if it's just a simple question i'll just reply to your thing but anything you sort of think of where it's like oh, i wish you covered this or something like that put it in the comments I'm always looking for video ideas, so invariably I'll do one. The next video in this series will be on the following, what's today, Tuesday, will be on the Monday. So look out for that one. 
best of luck guys if you need anything else you know where to find me comment below hey guys thanks for watching fatso gamer please hit like and subscribe and i will see you on the next video